Okay. Okay, yeah, thank you for everyone that's joining us here today. Uh, we're going to get started and I'll go over a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, first, we would like to just begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Abigail Mi'kmaq First Nation. Uh, my name is Madeline DeVoe. I'm the Marketing Manager at, manager at Innovation PEI. Uh, we're really excited to have you joining us here today. We're going to talk about uh, Indigenous Arts Grants Program and the Indigenous Art Bank. Uh, and I'll just go over those housekeeping items. I did say we're, we're going to be recording this session, so uh, we'll send this all out to you. If you want to share it with a colleague or a peer, uh, you can do so. Uh, we got a couple of questions through the registration form. Uh, so Patricia and Matthew are going to chat for a bit and then we'll go through those questions. Uh, but you're also welcome to uh, just come online, come off mute and ask your own questions. Or if you'd rather type them in the chat, I can read them out. Um, yeah, so with that, I will hand it over to Matthew and Patricia to uh, to kick it off. Well, thank you, Madeline. Uh, my name is Matthew and I'm the bilingual cultural development officer here at Innovation PEI. I've been um, at this job for about 10 months now, so I'm still generally new. Um, Patricia, do you want to introduce yourself? I was just going to support you throughout all of this, Matthew, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Patricia Bork. I've been working with Matthew and last year I worked with Shannon just as a consultant with the uh, Indigenous Art Grants and Art Bank process. And so that's what I am. I'm just there to cheer them on and root and reach out to people and guide and ask questions. So, but, yep. So Patricia is definitely uh, leading the charge with these two programs with my support. Um, so I guess what we'll do is just quickly kind of skim through the uh, different programs. We'll spend about 10 minutes on that and then we can open it up for uh, questions that were sent through the registry and any live questions that you guys may have on the chat there. Um, yeah, I will share my screen here. Can everyone see my screen? Yep, looks good. Yep. So this is our web page for uh, the Indigenous Arts Grants program. It is the uh, second iteration that we're doing of this. Last, last year was the first one with Shannon, uh, but it's my first time administering the program uh, with Patricia. We uh, offer uh, two, sorry, four different types of grants in this program. So um, there is a creation grant, which is probably the most popular one. So basically it's to create a piece of artwork. So for example, if you have a series of paintings that you want to paint, you have an idea, then that would be a creation grant. And so um, an established uh, professional artist is able to uh, request up to $8,000 and an emerging professional artist up to $5,000 for this creation grant. And we'll go through this these uh, these artist status a little bit uh, later on there because it's uh, a bit confusing sometimes. <laughs> um, the second type of grant that you can apply for in this program is a dissemination grant. So dissemination grant is just basically the uh, presentation of the works of uh, the artist. So it could be, um, for example, if you're a musician, it could be a tour, any type of presentations, exhibitions, performances. Uh, if you had done a series of paintings, for example, and you want to organize um, an exhibition that would be uh, if the paintings are already painted and they're done and you want to apply for a grant to to do an exhibition it would be a dissemination grant because it's presenting your artworks essentially uh, so again here uh, established professional artists uh, can have up to $2,500 for this grant and emerging can go uh, up to 2000 here the third kind is a professional development grant. So uh, this is a really interesting grant for any artist that's looking to kind of upskill in anything. So uh, it could be um, any type of workshops, mentorship opportunities, seminars, conferences, 
uh, anything to uh, to kind of upskill your artistic practice, basically. Um, the only thing that isn't um, that isn't eligible in this is like a full time school program, so it would have to be kind of a separate course on the side, I would say. Um, so in this particular uh, category of this grant, uh, amateur artists can apply as well. They can get up to $1,000, uh, emerging 2000 and establish 2500 And uh, the Indigenous Arts Grants is the only uh, arts grants program that we run that has this, um, this section here, but uh, people are able to apply for a visual arts materials grant is really cool if you have uh, a good idea and you just need the materials to do it. Uh, anyone uh, in the community can apply for that grant uh, to, uh, to get that little extra help for the materials. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the professional status, uh, you, you saw on the web page there we have like emerging and professional and amateur. Um, we have some text here that can help people kind of figure out where they fit in that. Um, so if you have like three or more of these points here, you could be uh, considered a professional artist, for example. Uh, there's always kind of some gray area uh, in this. Um, so um, I would just say if you're questioning your, your status as an artist, you could either reach out to me or Patricia if you want more information on this, or you can just uh, guess what you are and the jury will, uh, will decide for you. Um, but yeah, basically, um, an emerging artist, uh, there's, there's more points here that can help you figure out if you're emerging or established, but if you're emerging, you would be more at the early stage of your career. Um, you view art as your vocation. Uh, you have specialized artistic training. Um, you have created a modest body of work that includes demonstrated efforts to have public presentation. So kind of at the beginning of your career, maybe thinking of uh, making a full time career where your main um, your your money would come only from that, basically. Uh, maybe that would be an emerging artist. And a professional artist uh, would be someone who's recognized uh, by their peers, their artistic peers, uh, someone who has specialized training, um, someone who has a significant history of public presentations, um, and uh, you have created an extensive body of work. So you have a pretty heavy portfolio of work, basically. Like I said, this this situation here, deciding if you're amateur or emerging or professional is can get a bit complicated. So um, if you're questioning uh, what your status is, uh, just feel free to reach out to us and we can help you figure that out. And um, and yeah. So the deadline to apply is February 14th for these grants. There's these four different grants in the Indigenous Arts Grants. Uh, so there's still uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, the applications will be assessed through a jury that is going to be assembled um, by Patricia and myself and Michelle, who's the director of our department here, Michelle McCallum. Uh, we'll all be Indigenous people, obviously, on the jury. Um, and um, you can also nominate a uh, potential candidate to be on the jury, or you can also nominate yourself if you uh, are interested in doing this by clicking on this link here. So this will bring you to our jury page and explain our whole process. And then there is a form to download and complete here if you want to uh, nominate yourself or someone else that you know. Pretty simple form to fill out. We don't get a lot of applications uh, for people to be on the jury, so uh, it's great when we get some, so feel free to uh, distribute the, the information. Um, what you'll need to complete your online application, um, this is uh, basically we'll need a project plan so this would be a document that would be about 750 words or less 
that would describe the artistic vision of the project. So this is something that you can work on before filling out the form online. You can just kind of fill out your Word document and um, then you'll be ready to submit it when you when you click on apply now. Uh, the impact on your career development, uh, on your arts practice, your project plan, the timeline, I think, is something that uh, jurors really love to see. So, um, you know, what's your plan for creation and after maybe what's your plan for dissemination? How are you going to present the artworks and so on and so forth? It doesn't need to be set in stone, uh, the timeline. It could be, uh, you know, just an estimate of what you think, basically. Uh, obviously, what it is you're going to produce, um, how you'll be presenting it, as I just said, and then including a uh, budget for your project as well. We do have a budget template here that you can use. You can download straight from the web page. Uh, this is just to uh, help you build your own budget so you can, I don't know if you can see the template right now. Can you see it? No? <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a, it's an Excel sheet and it's a very a simple budget to follow, kind of fill in the blanks. Uh, there are lines in there such as project expenses, travel expenses, meals per day, for example, uh, living expenses. Uh, you can delete any line that you think is not relevant and you can add any other line that you feel is re relevant. Um, the budget is often something that uh, the, the applicants have some trouble with. Uh, it's just a bit confusing to, to build a budget sometimes. So this is another thing. If you have any questions, like just reach out to us and we can do it with you over the phone or in a virtual meeting here, just like we're doing today. Um, in terms of support material that you'll want to include, there's going to be places in the application form where you can upload documents and images. Uh, you'll want to um, add uh, any kind of audio samples if you're a musician, for example, any kind of written materials if you're a writer, anything you've written in the past. Uh, photos or di digital images, uh, concept images also, if you want to draw concept images of whatever painting you're planning on doing, for example. Um, letters of acceptance into a program, uh, some kind of letter of support from various uh, venues. For example, if you're if you have an exhibition at the Guild, for example, you might want to ask for the Guild to produce a letter of support for you uh, so that you can include it in your application and so that the jury can see that uh, it's booked and it's there. Um, yeah, and how do you complete your application? Well, once you have all that prepared, you just click on apply now here and it's a really simple online form that you fill out. It's just three sections. Um, and that is essentially arts, Indigenous arts grants. Uh, do you have anything to add on that, Patricia? Um, no, you really covered everything well. Um, I would love to add something about the jury. Um, I highly recommend at least one time being on a jury. It taught me so much, taught me so much about being in the art community as a whole. It taught me a lot about writing grants and writing these applications. You get firsthand knowledge and, and education on how to do this. And so after being on my first jury, I went and applied to Canada Council, which is a federal level, and uh, for a professional development and I won my grant. Um, so I really highly recommend doing that. That's yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a great idea. And uh, especially for some people who have applied maybe in the past and maybe got refused uh, by any kind of jury. Um, it's hard to understand like what's going on in the room during the jury day and how they how they give points to everyone and so on and so forth. So 
if you're an artist or an artist professional uh, that uh, would like to see how that happens, definitely apply to be on the jury. Uh, and I can guarantee it'll help you um, build better applications for your other grants in the future as well, I think. And you also make the contacts because there are other jury members. So my network has grown quite a bit. Definitely, yeah. So yeah, so that is Indigenous Arts Grants. It is open until uh, February uh, 14th and it is live now. So people can apply as of now. I just want to quickly go through um, the Art Bank programs because they're both open right now. So um, Indigenous Art Bank acquisition and also the, uh, the original PEI Art Bank acquisition is open. Uh, they're both separate budgets, though. So if you're an Indigenous artist uh, and you want, uh, you're interested in applying to the Indigenous Art Bank, um, you should probably ap apply to the kind of regular Art Bank as well and just double your chances um, of getting uh, an artwork purchased. The Art Bank is essentially the province's um, art collection. Uh, it is a uh, working collection, so the pieces that we purchase every year go out on loan uh, in public spaces. So public um, government buildings, usually in like high high traffic areas like lobbies, for example. Um, so paintings need to be or artworks need to be display ready. So that means that, you know, they need to be tough enough to, you know, be handled and they need to be framed and protected uh because it is a working condition and you know we're not museum quality uh storage here at the province it's not like the confed center for example um so yeah so we just opened uh, indigenous art bank acquisition uh on the same day on january 14th it is open until february 14th uh, it is mostly open for uh, professional artists that are interested in having the province purchase uh, one of their artworks um, eligibility is uh, basically all here, so you can submit a maximum of two completed works. Um, your work has to be completed in the last two years, so it has to be relatively uh, recent. Uh, they have to be display ready. Like I said, this is a work co working collection, so that's very important. Um, and incomplete works are not considered for uh, for the art bank here. And what you'll need to apply is basically your contact information, um, uh, artwork details, including the title, the medium, the size, completion date, and the purchase price is obviously important. Uh, a brief description of your work, uh, subject matter, process you used, uh, a resume, an artist resume. Um, any kind of uh, digital images of the artworks uh, front and back so that we can see how it's hung or how it's displayed, for example. Um, this is a much shorter application process. Uh, and uh, so if you're interested, you can apply by clicking on the blue button on the bottom here. It's just a three page application form. Uh, this is also juried uh, by an all Indigenous uh, jury. So uh, if you are interested in uh, being part of the jury or if you'd like to nominate a, a member of the jury, this will take you to the same page that we uh, looked at earlier here with the, the form to download. And uh, so that is the Indigenous Art Bank. Anything to add, Patricia? You covered it. <laughs> I want. I wish I could be as uh, speak as eloquently as you, but no, I think you pretty much covered it. <laughs> All right, and uh, yeah, just the last one is the PEI Art Bank acquisition. So this is the same kind of deal as the Indigenous Art Bank acquisition, except that it's open to everyone. So. Um, Definitely, if an Indigenous artist is applying to the Indigenous Art Bank, they should they should apply to the PEI Art Bank as well, because 
it'll be a different jury and it'll just kind of double their chances of uh, being purchased. Um, so I guess we can go to the uh, online questions. Just stop yeah. sharing if I can. <laughs> Um, I'll start with uh, the questions that came in uh, through the registration form. I can read those out and then uh, we'll open it up to any questions that anyone online has. Um, but one of the questions, and you kind of already answered this one, uh, was can someone submit to both the Indigenous and General Art Bank and grants? They can if they are Indigenous. So. Um, you know, Indigenous Art Bank and Indigenous Arts Grants are for Indigenous people. So that's that's the only thing. And another question that came in was, can grants be accessible for artists wanting to make uh, dancer regalia or beaded pieces for cultural dance performances or even to host beading in person or virtual workshops? Uh, definitely dance performances for sure. Dance is an art form and we've funded dance projects uh, in the past. Uh, a beating workshop is a different thing because um, I guess it's kind of an event and this this uh, program is more to produce art. Um, we do have like ways of funding that through our department, however. So if anyone is interested in hosting a beating workshop, for example, um, they could potentially partner up with a not for profit organization who would be able to access uh, some of our other programs uh, so that they would be able to do that activity. Um, I say the not for profit organization because most of the other programs that we run here, uh, except for the arts grants and the art bank, are all for not for profit organizations. So um, if they were to partner for the, with the Lenox Island Cultural Center, for example, uh, and they would be hosting the beating workshop there, uh, the application could come through the Lenox Island Cultural Center through Jamie. And you know we could get the money through her, and she could get the money through for the the workshop, basically. Um, okay, we'll open it up for any questions that anyone might have, or um, if there's any other points that uh, you guys would like to make or chat about, we can open it up now. Hmm. Typing maybe in the chat box. Great presentation. I don't have any questions, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to say great presentation, very informative. And yeah. Oh, there's a question there for you. Yeah. Um, I'll read this one out too, just so that we have it for the recording as well. Uh, could public libraries submit an application to host beaded workshops? Um, they could if they're a registered not-for-profit organization with the province. Um, public libraries, I guess, are, I'm not sure if they're considered not-for-profit. I'd have to double check on that and get back to you, I think, uh, Tasina. <laughs> Could you maybe leave me your email in the chat to, to Sina and I'll get back to you on that? I don't, I can't recall any application that we've received from a public library before. So I just want to go and uh, double check that with, with Michelle before I answer. But I'll definitely email you uh, to Sina. Or we have we have their email with, on the registration forms, right? Yeah, yeah, we have that. I can send that over to you, and you can you can chat yeah. and connect that way. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, and I just want to mention too uh, that uh, for anyone that will be listening to this in the future, and for our guests here today, uh, that me and Patricia are both available. Uh, to do some one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of virtual coaching. Uh, if anyone wants to uh, apply for a grant or apply to the art bank, 
and just need a, a, a little bit of support, uh, they can get in touch with me directly or with Patricia directly, and we can put something in the calendar. Uh, we're totally dedicated to getting uh the most applications that we can so we're very happy to do that so please get in touch if you if you need any help yeah and i'll share your contact info in a follow-up email with the recording so uh they can get in touch with you that way perfect i think we'll leave it at that if there's no more questions um but yeah thanks everyone for hopping on today and enjoy the rest of the day oh hold on one sec <laughs> Where Indigenous artist does self-proclaimed status card an acceptable form of being identified as Indigenous? Do you want to answer that, Patricia? In the application, uh, it does ask to state which community you are affiliated with. Um, so basically, that's what the information you need. You need to be part of a community or affiliate with a community. Does that help? Yeah, I'll share my screen here just for a quick second so you can see the application form. There is a question here that says, are you an Indigenous person? And when you select yes, you have to write the, the First Nation band name over here in this text box. And if you select no, then you're not eligible. <laughs>